Hi everyone, welcome to this brief webinar covering the more advanced features of the right to be forgotten, also known as the right to erasure, and data retention functionalities within OpenCRM. This webinar is an extension of both our dedicated right to be forgotten and GDPR retaining data webinars with this advanced offering, diving deeper into the technicalities and technologies of our features. Before we look at the rules in more detail, I want to take this opportunity to discuss managing the technical side of right to be forgotten. A question which has been asked to us, and in truth the entire CRM industry is juggling with at the moment, is how we manage backups in relation with right to be forgotten. Let's first outline the way in which we manage your backups. Something that is included for no charge within your subscription is that we hold backups of your open CRM system for 12 months and one week. This is made up of seven days of nightly backups, six months of weekly backups, and then a further six months of monthly snapshots. Now, if you wish to adjust the backup policy that you have with us, this can be done. All you need to do is tell us the period which you would like us to hold backups, and then we can provide the relevant time and cost estimates to manage this policy for you within the OpenCRM infrastructure. This also ultimately includes if you decide you would not like us to hold any backups of your data, although we do strongly advise against taking that strategy. Just to remind you, all of our backups are held securely within the EU and are encrypted during transit and at rest in the data store and are rendered unreadable by our strong encryption keys, which are held separately and securely. With our backup policy covered then, we need to take a look at how we manage right to be forgotten within our backup framework. And put simply, we use a methodology called scrub on restore. We hold what's called a suppression list. We build this list, this list by recording every time you process and complete a right to be forgotten rule within OpenCRM. Upon this rule taking place, an anonymized identification record is added to the suppression list. When a backup is requested and subsequently restored, the suppression list is checked against the backup database file. Therefore, the state of any record which has been marked as erased will be set and actioned accordingly once the restore has been completed. This ensured the restored database is always accurate to any erasure requests you have received following the period of this backup being taken. Put simply, we use the suppression list to scrub any data which has been the subject to a right to be forgotten rule before the backup is processed, completed, and your data is made live to users. The other area which we've received questions around are the more advanced and arguably more destructive actions that can be triggered within the right to be forgotten and data retention rule settings. In the second part of this webinar, we're going to look into the rules in turn to explain how they work and the effects that they have on your data. But before we do, just a quick reminder on our advised actions toward building your right to be forgotten and data retention rules. We advised on taking a layered approach to your rules within OpenCRM to ensure a considered and auditable approach to data processing. For example, we would never recommend going straight for an erasure of your data. Rather, utilizing a phased approach as an example, you could implement the following. On the date of a request being made, the record will be marked with a warning. Notify all users that that uh, record has been marked as right to be forgotten. At this point, a notification could be sent to an authorized user within your system and within your business for assessment and action. On day three, the record could be deleted. This does not mean that the record is permanently removed from your database, but is rather marked as deleted and therefore is no longer available to be processed by your users. Again, at this stage, we can send a notification to the authorised individual, allowing them to step in and authorise and assess that as part of your wider policy. On day 10, the record may now have a range of fields cleared to remove a certain set of data. Again, that's all dictated by your policy. On day 15, the record will be permanently cleared and the audit log erased. So this is the final step within that process, removing the record removing all history of that record from the system irrevocably. 
By using that layered approach, we give proper time for the authorised individuals to access and carry out the full due diligence on the request that's been made. Your internal GDPR policy should clearly document the steps that you as a business should follow and that you as a business have agreed, which we can then mirror into OpenCRM as part of the rule setting process. With that approach covered then, let's move into the second part of the webinar and explore the different actions which make up our rules and the effects that they can have on our data. From our open CRM system then, and as long as we have the correct permissions, we can now move into the settings area, scrolling down to our workflow and automation section, so we can dive into creating our right to be forgotten rules. As covered in our previous webinar, you will be presented with a case sensitive confirmation message just to ensure that you consider the steps and the actions that you're going to be taking on the next screen have wide reaching consequences to your data. Here you'll see we currently have a number of rules set up which we're going to return to in the second part of this recording. For now though, we're going to jump in and create a new right to be forgotten rule so we can explore the different actions available and the consequences that they will have on our data. So first I'm going to select which module this rule is going to be relating to. I'm going to select the contacts module and I'm going to give the rule a name accordingly. If required, I can add a description and once ready, I will set this rule to active. The first thing I need to do then is set my condition, the condition that needs to be met for this rule to take place. Now, typically within right to be forgotten, we're going to be looking at our right to be forgotten condition when our tick box has been ticked. With that condition set, I can now move on to set the actions which need to take place. We have our list of actions here and we're going to move through each one in turn covering what they do and the effect that they will have on your data. Firstly then we have a look at update self. Update self will update selected fields on a record. So for example I'm in my contact record, I'm going to update self, I'm going to choose to update my action plan field, I'm going to select my right to be forgotten action plan. Create new. Create new is going to allow me to create a new record. So for example, I might want to create a new activity record and I can also link it to the triggering record. So this activity is going to be linked to my contact record with the contents of my activity being able to be specified here. I can update a linked record links to this triggering record, which is my contact record. So for example, I might want to update all activities which are linked to this record, setting the status to be canceled, as I presume that all activities that are linked to this contact are now going to be canceled uh, with their right to be forgotten request received. One point to note here is that if you have a record which is linked to multiple individuals, i.e. I might have a meeting activity which is linked to not only this contact but three or four others, this effect will still take place. So just something to be aware of, potentially updating linked can have wide reaching effects to other contacts that may not have submitted a right to be forgotten request. I can also send a notification at this stage. This notification will be sent to the specified user or users within OpenCRM. When we've had a look at some example rules before, we might want to send a notification, for example, to our authorized uh, GDPR data processor within our organization to carry out our policy accordingly. I may choose to add a warning to my record. Warnings are shown both within the record and also in the list view of records. And we can set the description, the severity, and how long we would like them to stay on that record accordingly. 
as well as adding warnings, we can also remove warnings as part of our specified rules also. The six actions which we just covered there are our less consequential actions within OpenCRM. The ones that we're going to look at now, the ones below remove warning, are more consequential and have wide ranging effects on your data. So always exercise caution before setting and activating the following rules. Clear selected fields. This will wipe the contents of the fields selected. So for example here, I've selected my clear selected fields and I can specify the fields which I would like to clear. Point of note here, once this information is cleared, we cannot necessarily recover this information for you. So again, exercise caution in ensuring you are only selecting the fields, which at this part, at this stage of the rule, you're comfortable with clearing and removing irrevocably. An extension of clear selected fields then is clear all fields. As it sounds at this stage, we're now going to clear all of the fields on this record. Again, this is permanent, so please do exercise caution. Delete self. This deletes the record from your main system, no longer giving your users the ability to access it, but it still remains within the database and can be found using specified views or reports. And it is retrievable from our recycle bin, so it isn't as permanent as some of the ones that we've just looked at. Delete linked. Again, at this stage, we're going to specify the linked records of a certain type, which we would like to delete. Again, deleting a record removes it from your main system to be able to be processed by your users, still in your database, and can be found using specified views and reports, and is retrievable from your recycle bin. Again, as with our update linked, just be careful when using this rule, as if you have, for example, an activity that is linked to multiple contacts, it will be deleted for everyone. Remove links. The links that this record has to others, such as activities, contracts or campaigns, that link will be moved, uh, removed, therefore meaning that if we were to then have another rule such as delete links, it isn't going to be links that record any longer. So now we're bringing together some of the different actions which we've seen before. So this is our update linked clear selected fields. So at this point we are going to clear the selected fields of the relevant modules which are linked to this record and we select the fields accordingly. Again this is irrecoverable so please exercise caution. Update linked clear all fields. So again, an extension of our clear selected fields. This time we're going to clear every field within our linked record. Again, this is permanent, so please exercise caution. Wiping our audit log. Now the audit log is the history of all changes and modifications which have been made to a record. As such, there will likely be a fair amount of personal data within your audit log. Choosing this action is going to completely wipe the log of all previous information, only leaving behind a note to say that the rule has taken place. This is typically going to be one of the final actions which you carry out as part of your rules. And again, it is permanent. So as always, do exercise caution. And lastly, update linked wipe audit log. So again, extension of different features which we've covered so far. So this action is going to wipe the audit log of any linked activities, again, or any linked records which we specify, such as activities, contracts, or campaigns. Again, something to be aware of, if that, that record is linked to multiple individuals, that action is going to take place for others who may not have submitted a right to be forgotten request.
For the second part of this recording, we're going to have a look at the example which we covered in step one, and how that looks in OpenCRM, setting up the rules accordingly. So to begin, I'm going to jump into my stage one rule. So my stage one rule was on the date of the request being made, the record will be marked with a warning, notifying all users that this has been marked as a right to be forgotten request. At this point, a notification will be sent to an authorized individual for assessment and action. So as we can see, my condition, once my right to be forgotten box has been ticked, I'm going to add a warning to the record, and I'm going to send a notification to user one who's going to process our policy accordingly. Stage two then of our right to be forgotten process. On day three, the record will be deleted from the system. This does not mean the record is permanently removed, but is rather marked as deleted and therefore no longer available for processing by our users. Again, a notification will be sent to our authorized individual for assessment. So we can see at the top the condition, my box is ticked. It's been three days. We're going to delete the record and we're going to send the notification to user one for them to access and action appropriately. Stage three then, on day 10, the record may now have a range of fields cleared to remove a certain set of data as determined by my policy. So again, our box is ticked, it's been 10 days, I'm going to clear the selected field which I've specified as first name, last action, email and phone number. My fourth and final stage then, on day 15, this record will be completely cleared and the audit log erased. This is the final step of my process with the record being removed from the system completely. So we can see the box is ticked. It's been 15 days. Our first action is to clear all fields. Our second action is to wipe the audit log. That brings me to the end of the second part of this webinar, looking at the different rules that we can create within OpenCRM, the actions available within those rules and the effects that they have. Some more minor effects such as update self or sending a notification through to some of our more consequential effects such as clearing all the fields on a record or wiping the audit log. Again, we suggest taking a layered approach such as the one that you can see on screen here, a four stage approach. By utilizing that layered approach, we give the proper time for authorized individuals to assess and carry out full due diligence on the request being made. Again, these rules should always be driven by your internal GDPR policy. You should clearly document the steps that you as a business would like to take towards your compliance, which we can then help you implement and mirror into your open CRM system as part of your rule setting process.